Well, um, it's 6.02 and um, <clears throat> we have quite a bit of, quite a few items on the agenda. So um, I move that we open the joint meeting of the Board of Selectmen and Board of Health. Um, you vote on that? Uh, uh, no vote. No, you can just go. So, um, all right, so we're, we're now in session. Um, first item on the agenda is the coronavirus update. Um, sounds like John and Tony and Anna may provide some update. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I can provide an update. So we've had no new cases in the past seven days, which is wonderful. Um, in terms of our vaccination rates, um, in total for the town population, we're 73% fully vaccinated. Um, in terms of our age ranges, the 12 to 15 year old population, 43% have had their first dose. Um, but we're not far enough in for them to be fully vaccinated yet. The 16 to 19 year old population, 85% have completed their first dose and 71% are fully vaccinated. 20 to 29 years, 79% have completed their first vaccination and 70% are fully vaccinated. 30 to 49 year olds, 85% have completed their first and 74% are fully vaccinated. From 50 to 64 years, 91% have completed their first vaccination and 85% are fully vaccinated. Um, 65 to 74 year olds are 95% fully vaccinated and 95% their first per shot done. And then 75 and older, 95% have had their first shot and 85% are fully vaccinated at this point. That's really, that's uh, remarkable. So what's the, the um, numbers? Sorry. I it's I 12 that. years the youngest that are eligible? Yes, for Pfizer, the 12 to 15 year olds can um, get Pfizer as of right now. And is, do you know if there's a plan for kids younger than that or... I know they're working on um, studying the vaccine and I believe Moderna will probably be the next one to come out for the younger age ranges of 12 to 15. And then I think um, I would assume probably over the summer we'll start seeing younger age ranges for Pfizer first and then Moderna second. Sounds good. <clears throat> so that's really great. Uh, those numbers are awesome. We're getting, we'll get new numbers again tonight. Uh, so those are as of last week, we get them every Thursday evening. Um, you know, to be 73% fully vaccinated and 80%, at least 80% with the first dose, we're cruising right along. And we're doing, you know, compared to our, you know, we're, we're definitely um, ahead of the game compared to other communities. So that's, that's awesome. Thank you, Anna. You're welcome. Lynn Tech is starting to um, wind down their hours and it's going to move to Lynn Community Health's main campus versus Lynn Tech probably in July is what it looks like. Um, they'll run the clinic at Lynn Tech through the end of June as of right now is what I've been told. Where is Lynn Community Health? Um, it's downtown Lynn by the, train, by the um, train station. Okay. I'd like to add that. And then June 5th. Uh, supplementing the uh, Lynn Community right, Health Center is the Lynn Public Health Department. They have a clinic and they will be uh, uh, conducting vac vaccinations as well. Uh, their times uh, are posted on the uh, uh, the Lynn website. It sounds like the state of emergency will be, is expected to be lifted uh, June 15th. That's so it looks. Week. Dan, do you have anything to add uh, regarding um, the in-person, you know, committee meetings? Yes. As of now, the open meeting law will revert back to its pre-COVID status on the 15th, but there are two bills pending, uh, one for a permanent change and one for a temporary change. Of course, a temporary change was introduced by the governor not so long ago, and that is with the Senate Ways and Means Committee. They were taking written testimony as of June 1st, but they have yet to issue any sort of finding or decision, so we're waiting on that. 
the permanent change is with the state administrative and regulatory oversight committee. They held a hearing uh, on June uh, 2nd. It, it's actually online. You can watch it. It's about a three hour event. Some pretty compelling testimony from disabled folks championing the idea that they can participate by Zoom tells me that this will be a permanent change sometime soon. Uh, but at the end of the day, we're still waiting to hear back for anything official from the uh, that committee. But again, you can watch it online if you look for it under the State Administrative and Regulatory Oversight Committee in Massachusetts. June 2nd was a hearing. Is there any expectation, Dan, of like when they'll make a decision on that? Are they trying to do it ahead of June 15th or? Well, there is an expectation, there's a hope, but there's nothing really concrete to give us that um, that hope, to be quite frank. There's nothing out there just yet, but I'll keep you guys posted. So what that means for us is that any hearing to be uh, noticed as of, uh, as of, of already um, needs to be in person, and any meeting needed to be noticed as of the 13th needs to be uh, noticed in person as of now. All right. All right, so it looks like Gene's with us now, so that's nice. Hey, Gene. I'm here. Hey, good evening. You haven't miss, missed much. Um, well, I shouldn't say that. You missed the um, coronavirus update, but that's pretty much it. Great. Uh, so if that's it for corona, we can move on to opening comments. Um, the uh, compost area is open on Saturdays and Wednesdays from 9.30 a.m. to 3 p.m. Um, 2021 Nahant resident stickers are required. And you can visit Nahant.org for acceptable materials. But basically it's, uh, you know, no plastic, um, grass, leaves, twigs, etc. Nothing over eight inches in diameter and no tree stumps. Um, recycling dates for metal and white goods, TVs, and computers is the last Saturday of each month, month from 8 a.m. to 12 p.m. behind the DPW garage. Fees may apply. Uh, checks only, no cash. Visit not.org for more information on acceptable materials. <clears throat> um, parking stickers, 2021 parking stickers are now available on not.org. Uh, the ticker, the stick. Stickers are ten dollars each, and all outstanding bills must be paid and a consensus completed before purchasing. And um, from the looks of things, this past weekend, um, that those um, stickers are being enforced now. So, um, water and sewer bills are due June twenty eighth. Um, if you have any questions, please call the treasurer collector's office at the Nahant Town Hall. Um, any opening comments, Gene or? Mark, um, I think I think I'll wait until uh, citizens fall. I I do have a few things I want to talk about, but I'm hoping that um, a couple residents will be on um, at that point that can join me. So I'll wait till then, Josh. All right. How about you, Eugene? Yeah, I, I just got a call today and an email on the uh, traffic up in front of the town hall going down to Wash Street. Uh, a complaint that the, there's a, a continuous speeding in that area. And they're looking, the, the residents are looking for a 25 mile per hour sign up in that area. So I'm passing that along and hopefully we can do something to accommodate them. Yeah. Sure. I'll, I'll, um, I'm sure we can get a 25 MPA sign, uh, installed, um, Say by the town hall. Uh, yeah, like, somewhere around like, there. Yeah, probably just before you hit um, War Street. Okay. Thank you. Um, I guess just one more comment for me. It was uh, a really hot weekend. Just maybe the start of summer, and uh, around this weekend, I was. Pleasantly surprised how calm everything um, was, and uh, the police seem to have everything under control. So, great job to them. Police did a great job. Yeah. I heard a, a lot of compliments 
uh, uh, from over the weekend from a number of different folks about our police department. And, and I know they, they wrote about 100 tickets and moved an additional 100 cars. Um, so and I know they were working hard this weekend. And uh, I let the chief know that uh, that was recognized and that I, I heard the comments. So, um, you know, they're doing yeah. a good job. Yeah. And then, you know, they, they do a nice job balancing ticketing versus warning people. And, you know, I know I was up at Canoe Beach and they gave people a warning, gave people a chance to move their cars, you know, before they just ended up tickets. So sort of. And, and, that, you know, nice, and that kind yeah, of weather, would it be, in that kind of weather, would it be worth having the, the police have a summer outfit, you know, a, Bermuda's uh, shorts and, and T-shirts, something more than wearing a uniform in 90-degree weather? Uh, some nice talk to the chief. I assume on. that would be up to the chief. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm bringing it up. It's, I think it's a good idea. Leave it up to the police. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Uh, any other opening comments before we move on to new business? All right, so uh, new business. The first item is to approve Johnson School Field Day. Uh, is there a motion? I move that the board of selectmen vote to approve the Johnson School Field Day event on Tuesday, June 15th, 2021 from 8 a.m. to 12 p.m. at the Flash Road Park area with a rain date of Thursday, June 17th, 2021. I'll second it. Any discussion? Um, always a fun event. <laughs> uh, any other discussion? Well, All right, hearing and seeing none. Oh, go ahead. No. It's just good to see um, the kids get together again outside, and I think the uh, the yeah. focus the focus on this year is going to be polka dots. I think so the kids have to wear something. All right, like, something with polka dots. So, yeah, whatever. I miss those days. <laughs> um, all right, um, and and um, I know they did file a COVID. Um, <laughs> compliance um, guideline and safety um, regulations. So um, roll call vote. Gene Canty, aye. Mark Cullen, aye. Josh Andrew, aye. Uh, the next item on the agenda is approve the waste management contract. We have a motion I there. The, I move that the uh, Board of Selectmen execute the solid waste and recyclable material collection, transportation, and processing contract with Waste Management of Massachusetts, Inc., dated July 1, 2021, with a contract term ending July 1, 2026. I'll second it. All right, uh, moving on to discussion. Um, this is something that's been in the works for quite some time now. We've, we've talked about it at a number of Board of Selectmen meetings. Um, Tony, do you um, want to? walk us through some of the details here uh sure i had ed pasex on the phone on the call too ed's our um rep from waste management and of course dan Scripp as well has been working the three of us have been working together on this they've been working um over the last couple of weeks here finalizing the language of the contract um it's a five-year this is a five-year contract brings us from july 1 of 21 to June 30 of 26. Um, it's it, this contract is it's pretty competitive compared to the rates that you see in other communities. Ed Ed can speak to that. We have been dealing with um, the volatility of of recycling the recycling industry and the materials market. Uh, so last year we did a one year deal to try to uh, I guess coast our way through some of that the changes that were occurring. And then with the pandemic, uh, the volume of recycled materials changed drastically. So we've been kind of um, trying to 
uh, pin this down at the right time. And I think we've hit it. And, I, and um, you know, we're, we have, uh, you know, a great partnership with waste management. Um, you know, of course, uh, you know, this trash happens from time to time. It happens all the time. But, you know, they do a great job. Their trucks are in, in great shape. Their crews are, um, you know, uh, bring a community personality, I think, when they're dealing with the residents on the street. And we're very pleased with their company. So um, Ed's on the call here. And Ed, do, uh, do you want to say anything? Yeah, absolutely. Um, first of all, thanks for all your kind words. Um, you know, we, we work hard to uh, keep everybody in town happy and, and get the uh, trash and recycling collected. And, um, you know, I'd really just like to thank the town uh, for a successful partnership. We've been going on six years now, and it's been a real pleasure to work with so many good people in town and, and get to know uh, so many good folks. Um, and basically just say, you know, thank you for your business. We appreciate um, you know, working with the town and uh, we look forward to uh, working, continuing to work with the town for the next five years. Um, you know, one thing that Tony had mentioned is, uh, you know, the competitiveness um, and also the, um, some of the, uh, uh, the recycling volatility. So uh, I'd like to kind of speak about that for a minute and just say that, uh, you know, things have really picked up in a way that's, it's a nice development. Um, so I think, Tony, I, I haven't even brought you up to speed on some of the, the most recent development here. I just found out today, but um, the recycling markets continue to improve. And um, I think that's going to position the town in this most current um, contract here to, uh, to have a price that's, that's pretty much flat with uh, the, the, this current year. So, I mean, I know that the current year was extremely competitive. Um, and I know that we're going to be able to offer the town a, a price that's going to be very similar. Um, I, I just want to clarify that there is some volatility in that um, with the way the recycling is, is priced in there. But, um, you know, the way the market is, uh, is, is looking right now, it's very positive. So um, the town stands to benefit from that feature within our contract where um, if the, the markets improve, the, the price for recycling continues to, to go down. So um that's that's something that i would like to uh, to point out there um i don't know tony do you want me to, to talk a little bit about some of the other enhancements we have like with carts and, and so forth yeah i think the board might have a couple questions too but if you can quickly quickly hit some of those points. yeah sure absolutely so um you know one thing that we're we're pretty excited about is the introduction of recycling carts to the town um you know some really nice features uh about this this uh um, this program and it includes, uh, you know, I, I guess on an aesthetic level, just a nice curb appeal when it comes to trash day. Um, and, you know, instead of having as many uh, bins and, and, and uh, laundry baskets and, and boxes and all that sort of stuff out at the curb to, to contain everybody's recycling, there's a nice uniform look. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's a nice barrel that, that's on wheels. It's, it has a lid on it. And it has a nice town seal that's hot stamped right on the side, so it's it's a nice look. Um, in addition to that, uh, there's a there's a functionality though that that comes with it all. I think there's a convenience of just being able to wheel everything right to the curb. But then also, you know, you don't get the the birds and the wind and 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 you know uh, rodents and everything uh, spreading material around uh and 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 creating that that wind blown litter and wind blown bins uh you know and i know that happens uh in town just given the proximity to the ocean and, and all that so i mean there's some nice functional um uh en enhancements that go with that and then also just i mean on our end we we like it because it keeps the recycling dry and um you know that's a question that we get a lot oftentimes is well does doesn't the recycling have to be kept dry and, and the answer is yeah we it, it really should be and when you don't have a, a bin to contain it um it becomes uh it becomes kind of an issue so that's another thing that we're going to benefit from on our end is is when we process the material it's going to have um it's, it's going to be a little bit cleaner and and, and more dry so we, we like to see that so it's, it's like a win-win for for everybody there um, and then finally, I would just say that, um, you know, making this transition to the carts on the recycling side sets the town up for, uh, 
for the potential of some savings in the future. So, um, you know, we already have, I think, a very, very competitive uh, contract with, with the town. But um, if we could move this to an, a fully automated program, the town could benefit from, from some even greater savings. And, and having these carts deployed throughout the town is a prerequisite to have, um, is a prerequisite before we could go with an automated system. So, um, you know, it's just sort of laying the groundwork and, and it keeps that, that possibility open. And uh, our contract that we're, that we're contemplating right now also uh, has that provision in there that we can make that switch without having to um, not having to go through a whole nother contract process. So um, we're happy about that, that possibility in the future as well. So um, yeah, I don't know if anybody has any questions on, on what I shared. I was kind of a mouthful, but I'd uh, be happy to answer any questions you they might also, have. I heard from, I heard from uh, Lou today uh, that we are going to be the first town with uh, eco carts uh, in the ocean blue color, we will be testing. Uh, we'll be the first test, uh, the first town to receive those. So it's fitting for our town um, to go with that color. So that's good. It is, and, and just to kind of let everybody know the significance of the eco cart. Um, what the eco cart is is it's actually, you know, as you know, the, the carts are made of plastic. Well, the eco cart is unique in that it actually uses the same type of plastic that residents would, would put in the cart to recycle. It uses that type of plastic in the construction of the cart. Um, I mentioned earlier that commodity markets are improving and that's causing a, uh, um, a reduction in the, in the net cost to the town. This is the type of thing that we see happening in various industries and, and we're happy to, to partner with, with um, companies like Cascade uh, who, who are able to offer this type of... Uh, technology or, or this type of advancement where they're actually using that material. When companies use the, the recyclable material, what ends up happening is it, it drives the, the recycling markets in the right direction. And then uh, cities and towns get to save on, on their program. So it's, it's like, it's a full circle solution. Yeah. So we're real, real excited about that. Yeah. Um, Mr. Chairman, I, I have a few questions if I could. Um, um, Ed, thanks for your, your presentation. Uh, I just do want to mention that you know, our waste collection contract is, is exempt from the traditional Chapter 30B procurement laws. Um, that's why it's not being placed out to bid like normal contracts. Um, the state law provides the town to, uh, to bypass that. A couple questions, Ed. One is... Uh, First, first one that comes to mind are the old recycling bins recycled. Um, it's a good, so here's, here's the thing when it comes to recycling. M many things are recyclable, but not, not all of them are recyclable in the curbside program. So one thing that we uh, try to, to, to kind of coach and educate people on is the fact that, um, you know, we're looking for more like, uh, jars and, and, and uh, bottles and, 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 you know, kind of containers that people would use for, for food in, in household uh, settings, that kind of thing. Um, jugs for laundry detergent, that, that type of thing. So just because a lot of people's um, bins are, are plastic doesn't mean that they're appropriate for, um, for recyclable in, in this curbside program. So uh, one thing that Tony and I did talk about though was um you know if people did want to dispose of their old bins we would be able to collect those as part of the trash collection and they could just leave those out and and mark them somehow that you know they're they should be disposed of so i mean that way it would at least get those um out of people's uh hands if they don't if they don't need them anymore of course we would encourage everybody to reuse reusing is is actually more uh more commendable than recycling. Um, so if there's applications that people have for their, for those receptacles at home, um, whether it's restoring other items or, or, or anything like that, we'd certainly encourage that. And we're um, working on a, we're working on a, like a, um, a pamphlet uh, that'll be actually hanging from the lid of the new barrel when it gets delivered to your home. And on that pamphlet, it'll say, um, three things that you can do with your old bins. Uh, you can either A, reuse them, preferably reuse them maybe for yard waste or uh, for trash. 
Um, uh, B potentially we'll, we're going to work with Ed on a, you know marking them like he said like with an X for collection at curbside or C we may do a um, like a collection day at the DPW yard with a big dumpster so we'll, we'll okay. give people information uh, with the new barrels on what they can do with their old barrels Great. Hey, um, Tony my, just in regard to the disposal couldn't we get a sticker that says dispose? Yeah, we could do whatever, just something that if you're gonna put it out for curbside, that yeah. waste management knows, recognizes it as something to collect. Uh, we don't, we obviously, you know, don't want them to take barrels that people aren't trying to throw away. So yeah, we just could do anything small, that is, makes it clear. Just a sticker would be perfect. Yep. Sorry, Mark. No problem, uh, Dean. Um, uh, and I did take a look at the contract today. Uh, I am somewhat familiar with it. Um, I, and I talked to, the, uh, to Tony about it. And maybe you can um, fill in some of the gaps that um, went, went and said. Um, are you required, is waste management required to provide uh, weight slips on a monthly basis or an annual basis or a quarterly basis? Uh, so we, we have all the records for all the weights and everything so just just to um yeah so when we invoice the town on a monthly basis we invoice um for the collection service but also for the tonnage that we collect trash and recycling so that information is contained in the invoice already um but in addition to that one thing that tony and i have discussed in the future is um is, is basically a report that contains all the all the tonnage on a monthly basis and then also any any complaints or missed pickup reports that we receive uh in our call center that we could re report that back to the town we currently have all that information and we're, we're more than happy to provide it um it's just a matter of uh you know it being requested so instead of making it like on, on a on a per request basis we're just going to make it every month now. I think that would be helpful. Um, does that include, do you, uh, is our waste brought to Resco in Saugus? Yeah, all the solid waste goes there, correct. Um, and um, I know that they issue a sort of a, a tipping weight that um, that Resco must issue too. And that, and that your monthly report should correspond with those tipping weights, right? Absolutely, yes. Yeah, and we could we could provide all that if there's if there's a um you know if you need to see the weight slips or whatever backup you you need yeah. we can we can do that. I mean, I I just think it's good you know to keep our records straight um so there's no question if we can have our tipping weights from Resco Resco and what your weights are so that they match up um uh, we know what we're paying for and and whatever so I think that would be useful. I, I also think it's useful that we keep a uh, uh, a log of what the complaints are. Uh, there are there is a liquidated damages provision in the contract, correct? There is. Yeah, it's Appendix C, I believe. Right, um, and you know, hopefully, we don't need to go there. But in the event that we do, um, you know that information is going to be useful. By and large, I think that waste management does a, a great job. Um, you have certain weeks, we have some issues, but I don't think we're ever going to avoid that. Um, you know, as long as you can respond quickly, I think um, we can resolve those, those problems. But um, I think reporting that information on a monthly basis uh, would be helpful. Sure, we can do that. It's no problem. And I would just say this, um, it was, you know, we're, we're not perfect. We, we, we do our best, but we, you know, we're not perfect. Um, when, when there is an issue, if, uh, if, whether it's a resident or anybody uh, needs to report something, I'd encourage them to call our call center. Um, that would be the, the, the most efficient way to resolve anything. So if it's a matter of trying to get a truck back or uh, to, to their location, um, and that would kind of keep the town out of the process. Um, and, uh, and it would also just streamline it. So I know there's times when um, sometimes Tony gets a, a report or something and then Tony contacts me and then, then I could have contact somebody within our organization and 
And obviously we do our best to respond to all that. Um, but, uh, you know, if, if it goes directly to our call center, it's gonna cut down the, the response time. So that might, might help people. When does your last truck on Friday leave the town? Um, I, I think it, when, I don't have an exact time. I'm not, I'm not sure. I, I know it's sometime in the afternoon. Um, I mean, I, I, I would assume it's probably around, I, I, I don't want to assume it. I don't want to give the wrong information, but um, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I could find out though. Yeah, th well, the only reason I ask it is, uh, you know, particularly with Friday pickups, if they miss something, um, and we're in the middle of the summer, and now the homeowner is stuck with, with their rubbish um, through the weekend. Um, so if we could work something out, whether or not, I know, Tony, I know that you don't want to get DPW involved, but uh, the waste management has left town, they're not getting back uh, to town. You know, to help the residents, um, you know, we just collect it maybe if we have to, and we bring it down to DPW, something along those lines. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I think that the first, like Ed said, first first uh, step would be to call a call center and try and get that ticket in because you may be able to catch them before they leave uh, town or they far away. Uh, uh, and then if it's if it can't be resolved, then uh, certainly the you know the town will step in and do the collection and bring it down to the DPW dumpsters. Okay. One one final question. Uh, maybe you could just enlighten us on bulk pieces, Ed. Mm -hmm. uh, I've had several experiences where I called and got a number to pick up um, a schedule to pick up bulk pieces. It's been very very good. Uh, both times I used it, it worked perfectly. So maybe you can talk about that a little. Yeah, sure. So I mean, right now the way the um, the program is set up for the solid waste collection is it includes the option for residents to to put a bulk item. Um, I think it's uh, set up for one item per week. And um, what we ask is that residents just give us a call, and um, that's going to alert our driver that there's an item there um, at that location ready to be collected. So um, you know that's that's really the best way to handle that. And um, if, if if residents could do that, it, it will help uh, ensure that everything gets collected as, as they wish. Great. Thank you. Thank you. So right now, um, as far as homeowners, the only difference you'll see with the new contract um, <laughs> is that we'll be using the, um, the carts on wheels versus the individual bins, right? Uh, there's no change to the trash although you've built into the contract, uh, the possibility of going to standardized trash bins in the future um, to permit automated pickup from the, from the trucks. Mm -hmm. that's, all, that's all baked into the contract already, right? Yeah. But right correct. now, the only change is the, is the recycling bins being the larger containers on wheels. Yeah, and, and just one point, of, that's correct. And one point of clarification is that um, while the contract is set to start on July 1st, the bins uh, would be uh, scheduled to arrive in, in early August. Unless, unless there's been any changes to that, Tony, is that still right? That's still the timing. Okay. How are we going to distribute them? Uh, actually, Cascade distributes them. So... They come in on two big tractor trailers and then they distribute them. I probably, it'll probably take them a day or two and they drop them off at every house. Really? Yep. So That's we, give great. Them a list. we give them a list of all of our um, accounts. Um, if there's, you know, if it's a two family, if it requires two bins or if it's a one and requires one. Um, and then. And that's, in, that's in August? That's going to happen in August, right? Now, that's what we're looking at right now. Sounds good. Um, is there any more discussion? Uh, Mr. Chairman, just to point out that uh, Mr. Colnan had requested some tipping weight information on a monthly basis. Um, so your vote will be conditioned on uh, Ed, Tony, and I just adding that clause or a, a, some wordage to that effect. 
Yeah, okay. That, that's acceptable to us. It shouldn't be a big... I'm looking at the, the section now. It's just a few words. Uh, it, used to, it used to be in the older contracts, Dan. Okay. It'll be in this one, too. And, Tony, can you... Um, can you make a comment on the rates that people will be paying on a, on a per unit basis, uh, this contract versus this past year? <laughs> I'll save that for next week because we don't know the new, the, the rates, uh, quite yet. That's why we're going to skip over it this week. Um, some of those rates okay. are going to be adjusted based on the latest, um, that Ed was talking about earlier. Uh, they shouldn't see much of an increase compared to the rates that we had last year in place, if, if any, um, with, the, with the cost of this contract being a flat, uh, almost a flat increase, as Ed had mentioned, which, by the way, you know, we, we, um, Selectman Cullen had mentioned it's not uh, required to go out to bid. Uh, last year's if, this, if, if these numbers end up being similar to last year's numbers, we presented those last year and stated that the last time the town went out to bid and waste management had won that bid, the numbers that waste management were providing last year were still better than the, close, the second closest bidder from five years previous. So if we're still flat, we're still doing better than the bids we received almost six years ago now. So is that about, is that right, Ed? Yeah, that's exactly right. Yeah, that's, that's my, my recollection um, uh, precisely as far as the comparison of, of last year's contract with the prior bids. And then, um, you know, we're pretty flat this year. So that's, that's exactly how I'd look at that. So uh, when it comes to uh, per bill uh, number, we last year we changed the structure of how we did that um and we're going to continue with that structure but i think i don't i, I let me talk about it next week i think we're going to be about at the same the same rate maybe a small increase we'll i'll i'll, I'll let you know next week <clears throat> all right any any further discussion on the topic um, hearing and seeing none, we can uh, vote on the motion um, conditional upon waste management providing the monthly tipping weight numbers. Roll call vote. Gene Canty, aye. Mark Cullen, aye. Josh Edward, aye. Uh, next item on the agenda. What? What's that, Mark? I just said thank you to Ed. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, thanks for. Uh, Thanks for coming in. My pleasure. Thank you. Uh, the next item is a uh, vote to approve sale of bonds and signed associated paperwork. Um, I'll make a motion. I move that the board of selectmen approve the votes as written and incorporated such votes into the minutes of this meeting. So let me second. second. Let me share my screen. Second. Let me, uh... Okay. Thanks, G. So uh, quite a lengthy motion, um, many votes involved in this one. Uh, Allison, is, Allison is on as well. Uh, Allison, are you unmuted? I am now. All right, hi. Hi. Tony, can you, uh, can you zoom a little bit? My laptop screen's not that big. That's good for me. So I'll have to scroll. That's through. real good. Um, so, uh, why don't you? Uh, you've moved now to uh, vote as you know in favor as written. Um, what I'm showing you here is the as written part. So these, all of these uh, motions, individual motions, are approving the sale of bonds. Um, and authorizing 
the treasure collector to um, execute and deliver uh, certain rules associated with that. Uh, and this is this is all the language here um, that I'm scrolling through. And Allison's on the on the phone because I know this can get a bit technical. Um, but it is an annual pr procedure. So all of these bonds are, um, or these borrowings have been authorized by town meeting, town meeting vote, um, or through the, you know, through our municipal modernization act authorizations or things of that nature. So Allison, could you speak a little bit, uh, a little bit more in detail about these um, bonds? Yeah, so they're actually not bonds. They're bans, which are a short-term borrowing. Um, so the town usually borrows um, for one year at a time. Um, that's kind of been uh, how the town has approached its borrowing. And what that does is it saves the town on long-term interest costs. Um, and it's been pretty effective. So we have bans that are com coming due um, June 25th. So that's what the Series A ban is. It's to renew those there's three of them. And then the Series B is for bands that are coming due on July 8th, and it's to renew those for another year. In each of those series, there are some bands that we're paying down. Um, I put together a quick spreadsheet to show Tony today. We're paying down about 730,000 in bands in June and July. And so those are for projects that are already completed and it will basically help get that debt off of our books. Um, but the others are ongoing. Um, so again, these are all for authorizations from prior town meetings and it's for a number of projects. Um, I can answer more specific questions. We got um, for the series A uh, bands, we received five bids um, for the Series B. We received four bids. Um, both were very competitive. We got a 1% coupon rate for each, which is very good. It's basically a net interest cost of less than a half percent. Um, so we fared very well um, in the issue yesterday. Allison, I, I've got a, a couple of questions. Sure. Um, um, some of these bonds, uh, some of these bonds, you know, the, the, the lower the amount, um, we may carry short term for a while and end up paying them off before we need to go long term. But clearly there are some that we're not, we'll, we'll definitely go long term at some point. Um, and I'm wondering, you know, given the interest rates for some of those long term, you know, the, 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 some of the higher amount bonds that we know we're going to be going long term at some point. Mm -hmm. Does it make sense to go, you know, to go long term now to to go now, uh, you know, because the interest rates are so low, um, hoping that interest rates don't begin to increase in the coming years. I mean, just your thoughts on that. Yeah, I mean, I've seen it both ways. And it is a discussion that I've had with Hilltop Securities. That's the town financial advisor. Um I think for maybe some of the larger bands, that might be something that we want to do. For instance, the sewer and something right. that we uh, haven't fully spent yet, because um, you don't want to bond long term until you have fully spent those funds. So I could see considering that for the sewer next year when we do okay. this. Yeah. Um, but I other think, than that that, I think because we've been paying down the bands um, pretty quickly. I think that the way that the town is going about doing this um, has been the most uh, cost effective. Mm -hmm. I agree. I, I, I agree completely. Um, maybe next year we we'll take a look at those, um, particularly the sewer bond, and that's the one I was focusing on. Yeah, and, and then we're going to we're going to be long term. Us. We're going to be long term soon, anyway. So right, uh, we might as well, you know, take advantage of the low interest rates. Currently, um, they're not going to get much lower, I don't think. Right. And the other thing we could consider is, so this ban issue does not include um, 
any of the new authorizations from this past town meeting. There wasn't enough time since town meeting in May to get all of the bond council legal requirements. So we'll likely have another issue sometime later this fiscal year. So we may even wanna look at it then too. Um, and I can certainly run through scenarios with Hilltop Securities. Makes sense. Thank you, Allison. Mm -hmm. Uh, Tony, can we vote on this um, as presented? I thought we did it in 2019 and, uh, and in 2020, I think, as well. So uh, I'm comfortable with that. And that's the motion that Josh has read so far. Yeah, okay. And um, uh, I'm going to need you to sign this document um, th this within the next week. And there will be additional documents coming next week as well that everyone will have to sign. It's usually like a stack about yay high. <laughs> yeah, I asked this before, Tony. Um, I, I'm, I'm in town all the time anyway, so I can always run up and sign things. But Allison, can they, you accept electronic signatures on these things? That's a good question. On these documents, I do not think so. Um, Bond Council is pretty stringent on that. I have used electronic signatures for a number of other things, but I don't think you can for this. Okay. I agree with that. The Electronic Signatures Act doesn't apply to everything, and if it, it's going to make some exceptions, it's going to definitely be something like this that would require a wet signature. Yeah, bond council is pretty strict. <laughs> okay. I'm all set, Mr. Chairman. All right. Any other discussion? So we. We'll no, I, I agree with I agree with Mark's assessment, and Tony and I were talking briefly today about taking advantage of the, the lower interest rates. Yeah, that's a good point. Thanks for bringing that up. So we'll get in into town hall over the next day or two and get all these signed off. So we don't have the documents yet. Oh, okay. We can actually wait till next week. I think it's the fifteenth, or we'll have them. I'll, we'll let you know when they come in and sign them. All right. Um, any further discussion? Yeah, hearing and seeing none. Uh, roll call vote. Jean Kathy, I. Mark Cullen, I. Josh Uh The next item is to vote to approve the FY22 water, sewer, and trash rates. Do we have a motion? I, I move, move that the board select. <laughs> Go ahead, Jean. You, you, <laughs> I move that the board of selectmen vote to approve the fiscal year 22 water rate of $9.92. And the fiscal year 22 sewer rate of $14.08. Seconded. Uh, any discussion? You can so, speak to us a little bit, Allison and I, if you'd like. Yeah, please do. Um, water rate not seeing a, a tremendous increase compared to last year. Our uh, projected rate last year uh, for 100 cubic feet was $9.37, uh, this year being $9.92. Uh, we actually fared pretty well. A lot of that was because of a lot of the, um, the we, we fixed a lot of leaks this past year, so that helped us. And, and I don't know if you recall a few months back when we were developing our budget, me showing the rates compared to other MWRA communities. And we're, we're pretty low, we were, we were on the lower end of increases compared to last year. So water's not bad, sewer, sewer's high. Sewer, you know, we had, our rate was $11.99 and we're going up to 14.08. So this is a, this is a product of um, when water sewer increases, uh, their assessment, you know, they've told us we're going up, you know, potentially 50% over the next year. And um, a lot of that's due to the 
the closure of Gorilla Farms, the chain, the um, the new uh, O and M contract, uh, operating maintenance contract that they're going out to bid for, and a lot of capital improvements that they are either um, required to do from an administrative consent order or doing in order to get a better bid on their O and M contracts. Uh, so this is something that we've been expecting, um, and we are, you know, our the the we're we're looking at um, this summer. We will be looking at uh, potentially a restructuring of how we instead of having one rate for everyone, uh, potentially having a tiered rate structure um, based on usage. Uh, so further incentivizing conservation of, of water, um, but this is um, we haven't we haven't gone through that process yet. Um, Tony, I've got a question for um, either you or Allison, um, particularly on the sewer rate. Uh, as you know, we have a debt exclusion in the hunt uh, on our water and sewer, so the capital costs in Lynn, are they excluded, Allison? And why wouldn't they be? They're part of- they're Sorry, because it's part of our the, assessment. Yeah. It's included as part of the assessment from Lynn Water Sewer. So they are, it's part of our contract with them. So it, it's not um, a debt exclusion. But it is a debt. A yeah, but it's in incorporated as part of their assessment. Um, so it's not, it's a charge that they're passing on to us, I guess, is to look at it. Okay. So the capital <laughs> improvements plan, that, oh, go ahead, Allison, sorry. Yeah, I, you know, I've never considered it before. Um, maybe something we could look at. I, I don't know too much about the capital program in Lynn Water Sewer either, so. Yeah, so my understanding is, Tony, correct me if I'm wrong. So Lynn Water and Sewer do a five-year capital plan, uh, basically upgrading the plant, um, and they um, distribute those <laughs> costs to the, the communities that participate uh, on a percentage basis. Uh, I'm just wondering why that why that portion couldn't be considered under our debt exclusion. Uh, it might be something we want to look into. Okay. Um, it is also, you know, in terms of the amount, it's like for what we appropriate, it looks like for FY22, the amount for the capital part is about $50,000. So um, the assessment piece is what's really driving up the actual sewer rate. But yeah, I think it's something we should look at. But I think what, what Mark's talking about is is the capital costs at Lynn Water Sewer oh, that are right okay. now being lumped into our assessment. assessment. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm saying, exactly. Okay. And we're not seeing that capital improvement, those capital improvement costs yet. Is that a true statement? In other words, they haven't made those capital improvements yet nor uh, they, the they're in the process of doing them now and i think that's we're starting to see that's part of the increase in our assessment that we're starting to see is that cost being passed down to the communities right so uh, mr chairman what they do is they'll do a five-year plan and then go out they'll go out and float a bond for that capital improvement uh, and the principal interest payments on that bond will be distributed among the communities and my question to Allison um, and Tony was, because Nahan has a debt exclusion on our, um, uh, on our water and sewer borrowing, um, wouldn't that apply to that? And I think it's worth looking into. It's not a lot of money right now, but it's something. I think could that apply to it is like the way, is, is what I'm thinking is, we could we could potentially ask for a breakdown of the assessment that we receive. How much of that is capital costs, right? And then potentially shift that and right. raise it on the tax levy, 
Right. Um, now, the, you know, the only difference is, I mean, the hot's going to pay one way or the other. It's either going to pay through its real estate taxes or it's going to pay through its water and sewer rates. Um, personally, I'd rather pay through my real estate taxes because I can write that off in my federal income tax. I can't write off my water and sewer rate. You're also, you're also in the last couple of years, your write-off cap has decreased, right? So most people are hitting that anyway. So the benefit of that is kind of um, decreased a bit and you're not capturing properties in town, some of which that are larger in nature um, that don't pay property taxes. Exactly. So there's like that back and forth that's some of the, that's one of the things we're going to try to take a look at um, in this summer when we're talking about how we structure our sewer rates. Mm -hmm. um, so you know we don't even with the current the the current debt shift we don't have to shift all of our debt costs. We can pick you know we can shift some. We it's up it's it's up to the board of selectmen. Uh, so it's not a must, but it's. Um, we do have the authority to do it. So we, I wonder if we could, we could potentially explore that mark and shift it over. Um, okay. What we're going to say. Okay. Thank you. Oh, I was just also going to say that on top of the five year, the typical process that you mentioned, because their operating maintenance contract was ending this year, the 30 year contract with, um, forget the name of the company, but at the end of that contract, they come in, they do a full assessment of the, of the current, um, of the facility and, and pinpoint items that needed to be repaired or would benefit a future bid on the future O&M contract if invested in. So on top of their five year, they had that process happening and just the new contract and the increase in costs associated with that from a 30 years later contributing to this assessment as well. So uh, some of it was capital that, you know, they were doing to try to get a better price, um, but prices are still really going up. And then plus on top of that, they're under an administrative consent order as well. So some of the capital costs were, are required. Um, so a number of things factoring into those, to those, to that increase. So what I'm wondering is um, this increase is whatever it is, 30 or 40% over last year. And maybe the, maybe the bonds have been taken already for the capital improvement, but sounds like maybe the O and M contract is not yet reflected there. So what I'm wondering is, you know, is this the tip of the iceberg or is this, you know, half of the increase we're going to see over the next couple of years? Is there a way to predict this? Well, one more, I think, once the new contract is signed and what that cost is going to be, um, I lean towards, uh, I, think, I think this is more like the tip of the iceberg. I think we're going to be continuing to see increases. And the best, the best thing we can do you know, this is, it's a volume, it's a volume unit. It's a volume based unit, right? So the best we can, there's some things that we can do to help reduce that cost is improve our II, promote water conservation, you know, things of that nature. Yeah. So just, you know, to remind people, obviously we don't have meters on our sewer. We have meters on our water consumption. So you save on your water consumption, you save on your, your sewer. Mm -hmm. Um, just to touch upon the point Mark made about whether the extra cost should go into real estate tax um, or in, in the in, onto the water and sewer, as Tony pointed out, not everybody pays real estate tax. So um, we have to be careful with that and, mm -hmm. and um, debt transfers as well to make sure everyone's paying their fair share. Yeah, it's a mixed bag, Josh, for sure. The only other thing, Tony, and I, we've talked about it a lot, is to make sure that whatever capital improvements Lynn is making and passing off to the other communities are actually our costs. Um, I mean, if they're doing mm high -hmm. stuff in Lynn that specifically address the Lynn, um, not affecting Swampscott or Saugus on the heart, then we shouldn't be paying for that. 
um, and just make sure and that that had happened in the past um, that the time when I first came on the town was paying um, not only in the high but Saugus and Swapskit were paying for capital costs that were not the result of anything either of those communities were doing and and it it, it created a big adjustment in, the, in our rates. So uh, I'm not saying that's happening now, uh, but it's something to be to be watchful about. Definitely. How do you police that, Mark? Well, they have to. They have to have a. a like, as Tony said, they'll have a complete capital plan, um, and all of the improvements in their capital plan. And one of the things that Tony and I uh, talked about was the hiring for Saugus so, so Nahar and uh, Swamps get to hire our own engineer uh, to go through that capital plan to make sure that those costs uh, that are being passed on to us are ours. Yeah, that, that sounds like a good idea because you know, as you spoke about you know, how to make sure those capital costs are applicable to, to Nahant and Swamps Cut. And so that's immediately what I thought. Well, how, do we, how do we scrutinize this to make sure we're um, that sounds like a good idea to, to sort of share the cost of some an expert to review all those. Right, and I'm sure Swamp's getting Saugus would join in with us. Yeah. yeah. So, in the meantime, we have a motion in front of us. Um, is there any more discussion? A hearing and seeing none, roll call vote. Jane Canty, aye. Mark Hall, aye. Josh Andrew, um, The next item is to vote to approve the FY22 trash rate in elderly exemption. Is there a motion? So postpone that one. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, you told me that already. <laughs> sorry. Um, we're also not going to do the fee schedule, right? So fee schedule, uh, we do every every year before July 1st. Uh, we have sent it out to our department heads to ask for any updates that are necessary. Um, we, Because of COVID last year, we, we the only thing we changed in the fee schedule was the water, sewer, and trash rates. All other fees stayed flat. Um, and I anticipate that to be the same this year. Um, but this is also another item that, you know, I think that this year heading in, you know, we should think about a, you know, working with the finance committee to study our current fee schedule and compare that to our neighboring towns and potentially propose some, some changes for a future fiscal year. But I think that that requires a public process and plenty of lead time and notice to our residents. Um, you know, we may not be talking about significant increases, but, um, you know, I, I, I'm not sure where we stand as far as how we compare to our neighboring towns on certain fees. So um, we, you know, we're not talking about anything drastic for this upcoming year, but we may want to think about starting the process of really digging into the weeds of our schedule and and maybe you know preparing for a a, a freshening up of of those fees for the following fiscal year absolutely yep so after you hear back from the department heads will we want to reconvene for a quick vote on this or can we proceed until I the think, july meeting so i think we're gonna, next month i think I think uh, we're going to be meeting again before July. Uh, we have a couple different things that we're going to have to get in front of you guys. So um, we can, we can, uh, I just wanted to bring it up to your attention tonight and we'll have it on the agenda for the next one. Okay. Sounds good. So the next item on the agenda is the FY22 appointments for review and votes. Uh, we have only one appointment this year, treasurer collector. Um, is there a motion on this? All right, Jane. I move, that, I move that the Board of Selectmen vote to approve the appointment of Brendan Carrie. Have I got that right? Correct. 
Correct. As the treasurer collector for fiscal year 22. Seconded. Uh, any discussion? Um, this is something that happens every year. I can read this um, term of office statement. There's value in that. Um, I think, no, you don't have to. It's our, the, the, uh, the town charter, um, the only position in there that requires an annual vote is the town treasurer and collector. Uh, so uh, short of a charter change, we have to take this vote every year. Yep. Um, is there any discussion? Uh, Brenda does a great job. Yeah. He does uh, a great job. We're very lucky to have him. Um, and he's he's a great great part of the team. He's developed, you know, he's been treasure collector now. I think this is going to be his third year. Uh, and he's, you know, coming right along. He does a great job. Yeah, I just wanted to say I really am more, I enjoy working with Brendan. I think he adds a lot of value to that office. He's great with the public, um, very calm, cool, and collected. Um, and I've just really enjoyed working with him over the past few months. Yeah, thanks for that. I, I, you know, I don't have the insights into the, you know, his daily working, but you know, it's certainly when I come into the town hall, he's you know always a pleasure to deal with. So as a taxpayer, I certainly appreciate that. So, um, roll call vote. Dean Canty, aye. Mark Cullen, aye. Josh Antrim, aye. All right, so hopefully we get to keep Brendan for another year. Um, there's a vacant seat on the Board of Assessors. Um, so this is really an announcement. Uh, there's a vacant seat on the Board of Assessors. Please send letters of interest in your resume to Kristen Taylor at K Taylor at Nahat.org. So K T A Y L O R at Nahat.org. Um, this is an elected position. So this would be anticipation of a, uh, an appointment until next April's uh, vote, I assume. Is that, is that correct, Tony? That's correct. Uh, so the plan right now is that we would do a joint meeting with the Board of Assessors on July 14th. Uh, so we're asking um, for people to get their letters of interest uh, in as soon as possible. Uh, as we get them, we will send them out to you and the assessors to, you know, interview the folks that are interested. And I'll also just mention that this is the seat of the late uh, Perry Barrasso. Uh, so mm -hmm. it's an important one. And um, we're looking forward to getting to interviewing some qualified candidates. Hey, Josh, can I back up one? Why is the treasurer sure. collector appointed every year, reappointed every year, or appointed every year? Why is that not a full-time position? It's our town charter, Gene. Our town yeah. charter, uh, it's the only position in the charter that uh, says that the town treasurer and collector uh, is appointed by the Board of Selectmen for a term of one year. At one time, that was an elected uh, position, a while, you know, quite a while back. But um, it just seems uncomfortable to be in. One, it, it just seems uncomfortable to be in a one-year position for somebody, as opposed to having a full-time yeah. position based on performance. Yeah. I definitely understand. I understand what you mean. It's it, it probably feels a little strange for someone, you know, a young man, young woman trying to build a career. I mean, I think the risk of us not voting him, you know, is, is low, but um, it is a little odd. I agree. But it's there. It's it's it can that be changed, Tony? Uh, it could be changed by a special act or through a uh, charter. Uh, you know, you can either just mission through a special act or you can do a charter commission. To I think that would require a charter commission. Um, if we're going to take that from an elected position to appointed, I'm sorry, appointed to elected, you need to. No, I think he's saying, I think he's saying, can we change the term, the appointment term? Uh, uh, still so still leave it appointed, but change it to 
you know, multiple oh, I see. years. I still think he'd have no, 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 I'm not. I'm saying change it to a full-time position. Eliminate the time appointment, but a hire, you were saying? Yeah. Like a standard. A hire. Yeah, it might, require, hire. It, it, it might require a charter commission. Well, there's something to think about, I think. Yeah, I think when we're talking about uh, charter commission changes, uh, you know, let's take a look at the, the whole thing. Um, it's, you know, the, there are a lot of changes that need to be made to that charter, charter that I can think of. And I'm sure you can, Tony and Dan. I'm sure you can. Um, so uh, maybe um, in the near future, we can uh, take a look at appointing a commission to, uh, to review our charter and to report back um, with some recommendations. Great idea. Yeah. Mark, I believe... I'll have to double check. I remember looking into this a couple of years ago. The members of a charter commission, I believe, are elected. So you have to create the commission, then you have to hold an election. Um, it's not a it's it's not a, a a quick process. Not at all. It, it's it's a lengthy process, deliberately. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's, a, two, it's a two year process and requires what a two thirds vote on anything that's changed. It's it's not easy, but so it has to be deliberate and well thought out. Yeah. Well, it's what we should look at. Yeah. I feel like this came up yeah. a couple of years. Not on this specific issue necessarily, but some other change. Yeah, no, I think, I think Mark is correct. We need to look at it. If it takes two years, it's two years. I mean, let's go forward with something. And if in the middle it doesn't look like it's something we want to continue with, then we back off of it. But I think it's a good idea. Yeah, I agree. Um. So, uh, well, let's just revisit that. Um, I'll, I'll speak to each of you and we'll revisit that. Um, and we were speaking about the Board of Assessors, so it's our, part of our bylaws require a joint vote of the members of the Assessors and the Board of Selectmen. Uh, so if anyone's interested in being appointed to the Board of Assessors uh, from, now, from now until uh election day of next year in april um please send your letter of interest to kristen at k taylor at nahant.org as soon as possible um we will be we, we will be voting on that july 14th so um if we're voting on the 14th we want to set at least a tentative deadline of uh, uh let's say the 12th which would be monday Maybe just to get our ducks in a row. Uh, let's do. Let's say Friday the ninth. Sounds good. So get your uh, letters of and resume in by July 9th. Hopefully, we. You know, recently we've been having um, good luck filling these vacancies where we've had. You know more volunteers than than slots, so hopefully we continue with that positive trend. Uh, the next item on the agenda is Nahant Fire Department Fire Chief. Um, the Nahant Fire Department is now accepting applications and resumes for Fire Chief. The job description and job posting is on Nahant.org. Please send a cover letter and resume to Kristen Taylor at K Taylor at Nahat.org, K T A Y L O R at Nahat.org. What what is Dean Palumbo's effective termination? You have resignation date. He is retiring on the thirtieth. His last shift is the twenty eighth. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 So he's retiring on the thirtieth. Um, another um, announcement 
is for the assistant town accountant. Um, we're now accepting applications for assistant town accountant. The job description and job posting are on not.org. Send letters of interest and resumes to a Anito at Alice uh, at Nahat.org. That's Allison. So A N I E T O at Nahat.org. Um, both of those, both of those don't have deadlines. Uh, as we receive um, qualified applications, we will be scheduling interviews, and the posi both positions are open until open until filled. Is the assistant town accountant, is, that's a 40 hour a week position, is that right? 37 and a half. 37 and a half. Yep. All right, um, ongoing business, vote to approve and sign town administrator's contract. They have a motion on this. I'll make the motion to sign the contract, town administrator. All right. Um, there's a little more detail on the uh, on your. You know what? I didn't have that in front of me. I'm sorry. Uh, I move that the board of selectmen vote to approve and sign the town administrator's contract with a starting term July 1st, 2021 to July 1, 2024. Second. I'll second that. All right. Um, any discussion? Uh, I just wanted to add. We've been going. Um, the board has been in executive session um, the last couple of months regarding this. Um, we have developed a set of goals and objectives for the town administrator um, that um, we all agree on. Um, the contract that um, that we are about to approve is really um, um, set up so that we encourage uh, the town administrator to say, stay with us longer. Um, if possible, um, and um, I, I support this contract. Yeah, I, I would agree with that. Um, you know, as you mentioned, Mark, we've been working on this for several months now, and uh, with a huge bit of help from Dan Script. So thanks, Dan, for all that coordination. Uh, we can't, um, as you all know, we can't meet um, outside of. Um, session, whether it's open or executive session. So uh, Dan's done a great job of coordinating with Tony and, and amongst the three of us to come up with, I think, um, a good contract that uh, we're, we're uh, really happy that, hoping that Tony will sign this contract and we'll have him for another three years. So um, I think it's a, a, a good contract for, for Tony and uh, at the same time respectful of the town's budget. So. Um, hey, and I'd, I'd also like to say thanks to Tony for making this process that much easier for us to, to work through. Thank you, Tony. Yeah, that's a good point, Gene. Tony has been very cooperative for all this, um, for this whole process, you know, hammering out some of these details. So good job all around, I think. I thank you guys. I thank the board. I thank Dan for his help. I thank the board. I thank you know, our team, I love what I do. I love who I work for. I love our team. Um, I'm, ex I'm truly grateful and ecstatic to have the opportunity to sign another three year contract for, you know, the, the town that um, has molded me as a person and um, as, and now as a professional and, and I'm, I, I, you know, I'm, I'm thrilled to have the opportunity. So um, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. All right, so um, we- Hey, can I, can I sneak something in? Of course. We uh, I'm looking at the Monday edition of the item, June 7th. And on the front page, there's a report on air noise over Swanscott. And just for the purposes of looking down the road on this, one paragraph says, according to Stein, who's the Massachusetts Port Authority, Logan is considering shifting flight paths of approaching planes slightly north, I think they meant south, so
so that they travel over the Nahant Causeway instead of Swampstead. I think that we need to take a look. Is, is our abatement committee in full force right now? Mr. Chairman, I think maybe we should finish our vote on this and then we can talk about that, maybe. Oh, I'm sorry, did, did we not yeah, finish? Well, I think Go we ahead. just need to um, get into town hall to sign. Well, uh, let's see, are we voting on this? <laughs> yeah. yeah, we haven't voted yet. Uh, yes, yes, we are voting. So any, any further discussion on Tony's uh, town administrator's contract? Hearing and si seeing none, uh, roll call vote. Gene Canty, aye. Rock and roll, aye. Rosh Andrew, aye. So um, we'll get into town hall to sign. Thank you. I assume that's the procedure. Um, all right. Um, let's go back to your um, your your concern, Gene, about the uh, flight path. Well, Dan, you you uh, informed us or gave us some information on this probably four or five months ago. That's Is right. This something. Go ahead. Did you say the planes are approaching uh, over Nahana? Did you say departing? I missed that word. Coming, coming, and going. Okay, well, those are two different, those are, I mean, not to be facetious, but those are two different things, and the planes follow two different patterns when they do those sorts of things. Um, there is a action committee that works with the state and federal aviation authorities that is already looking into this, and they're specifying what they call RNAV 22 left, which is a particular route planes take to land at Logan. And that particular change would divert, not well, divert's a bad word, but would, would, would alter the current path which is basically straight over Salem, uh, Salem, uh, Lynn, Swampscott, right down into the runway versus, as you mentioned, uh, coming across the causeway and then sort of banking, making a left dog leg into the final approach to two, two left. But as you probably can tell, I, I look out my window and that, well, now they're departing. But uh, when, they, when they're coming in on that runway, they do it already. They're already sort of testing it out, as you, if you will. So uh, it's already taking place. And like I said, there, well, we, what's that? Go ahead. There is that committee. Our currently, we the town has no representation in that committee. Bob D'Amico was our longtime representative, and he stepped down after a bunch of years. So that is open for some folks if they want to jump on it. I spoke to someone from Little Hunt that seemed interested. I never heard from him after town meeting. So there is that happening, and that's an ongoing current committee that I think has another meeting coming up sometime soon. Well, when we when we last had this discussion, you had shown us the patent, and the patent was the planes would be coming from the north, and as soon as they got to Little Nahant, they would bank right and then left. They'd uh, go that, right over the that that RNAV approach involved flights. Um, not over Little Nahant, I mean, close to Little Nahant, but didn't go over Little Nahant on that path. Mm -hmm. Now, there are some planes that approach over Little Nahant, and they're, they're not following that particular RNAV. They're what they call flying VFR. They're just looking out the window, essentially, and eyeballing the runway, so to speak. I mean, it's a little simplistic, but that's what they're doing. Like today, uh, you'll have a lot of planes coming over Little Nahant, but not the big ones, not the really big loud ones, what they call the heavies, the 300,000 pounds and more. They'll follow that path every time. And now there are some complaints from Little Nahant folks that say, well, I see these planes going directly over Nahant. And I have yet to see that on an on approach. I've seen it on a departure, but not on approach. Um, I've seen, I see it on approach often. Well, if they're not, if the, this, the, 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 you know, the regional jets and the Cape Air with their 302s, yeah, they'll come over Little Nahant quite a bit, but not the big ones. The big ones will follow that path pretty, I mean, that's a pretty precise path that they follow. It is. Yeah. It's just something I thought we should be watching. Well, no, you're absolutely right. And, and you should encourage someone to step up and join that committee. It's all, as, as far as I've been seeing, it's all sort of by telephone, by Zoom. That might change. So, so um, Bob reached out to me the other day saying that he actually feels like he could still remain a, a member of the noise abatement committee. Um, and I meant to reach back out to him to see if uh, – how he felt about getting back on as our representative on the committee that you were talking about there, Dan. 
Um, so I do want to speak with him, but if uh, if we need more, if we need someone else. We're definitely going to put that out there. Gene, we've been watching this very close. Uh, I'm sorry, Selectman Candy, we've been watching this very closely. Uh, Dan's been joining a lot of the committee meetings that um, have been occurring at the state level. Uh, they are what we discovered really was that there's it's still going to be some time before they implement this change. They're going through this test process. We've at, we are on their um, radar, so to speak, not to use that um, as a pun, but um, as far as expecting commentary from us on behalf of the hot residents, as well as from um, elected officials representing us. So we're definitely keeping a close eye on it. Um, and yeah, and, and you're right. It does say that this whole process is a year out. Yeah, it's quite some time. It, we, sh we should definitely get, you know, somebody from the hunt on that committee. Um, I know in the earlier conversations, I, I think Rick Scordis was one person who um, was at least interested in the process. It is a tough situation because, uh, you know, this new flight path kind of relieves a lot of Swamp Scott and other areas north of there from this flight path. So it's, it's a tough situation for the hunt. It is. Yeah. It most, a lot of it's environmental justice communities. Um, it's, it's Salem, Danvers, Swanscott, Lynn, Revere. Um, that's the path that they're currently on. So um, it is a tough, it is a tough spot for us, but um we're 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 gonna we're gonna, we're gonna it, it may not be we may be able to push them a little bit for for uh, a little bit more north on the causeway so it's not as close to Nahat. and yeah. this new these new the new technology that Dan knows a lot about um, actually keeps them closer to their to their flight path than uh, you know, years, years in the past. So um, it may not be as bad as, as we expect. If you think, if you're comparing it to, you know, uh, what's occurred in the past, but we're still obviously want to be represented and we want our opinions taken into account. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, yeah. Uh, the, the, the precise flight path will help. And, uh, you know, even if we can push them just a little bit North, um, on the causeway that would help a lot because you know you really hear it you know when you're on that that particularly <laughs> that like facing side a little in the hunt i'm sure it will be unpleasant you know along wilson road so anyway let's get someone on the committee and see how much leverage we can okay, how about you dan okay. What's that? Yeah, let's go. Let's do it. Jump, I'll jump in the cockpit and we'll fly it together. <laughs> Dan happens to be Dan's a perfect guy for us uh, on this issue because he he has uh, that's his side that's his uh, his side hobby or interest is, is <laughs> yeah. flying planes and so you know usually I'm like I hear I hear a plane go over town. I called Dan. And I'm like, "What plane was that?" And he looks it up on an on an app. He knows exactly, like, you know, what type of plane, when it came in, how big it was, whether it should have been there or not. Um, he knows we he knows it very well. So, and we just had an Airbus pass over the uh, causeway about four minutes ago on its way to LAX. <laughs> there it is. Still see it right there. Uh, Touch it. <laughs> so. All right. All right. The next um, next item on the agenda is preserving East Point. Um, I can provide a quick update. Um, at our last meeting, we uh, we had exchanged letters with Northeastern about um, having a meeting to. Uh, um, 
get a discussion going on preserving East Point. Um, it's, I think we have agreement um, for a meeting next Wednesday. Uh, we were hoping for sooner, but um, there were scheduled conflicts last week and uh, their attorney, um, one of their attorneys was on, I think, vacation this whole week. So um, next Tuesday we'll hopefully be our, uh, we'll have a meeting in Boston and um, um, begin those discussions um, in light of the, the sort of the new dynamic based on the town meeting votes. <coughs> um, Mark or Gene, do you have anything uh, to add there or Tony? No, I'm no, good. I, I'm good, Josh. i would be interested in seeing how you do in those meetings. Yeah. So I just, um, for people's information, um, in order to have these conversations, uh, obviously we can't have a, uh, a quorum of selectmen. So that limits it to one selectman. Um, over the past few years, it's been the chair. So that'll be me and Tony and um, town council, Jeff Blake will be the three people attending this first meeting. So I think that's the only news that I have and sounds like none of you others have anything more on East Point. So the next item is town administrator's report. What do you have for us, Tony? Well, I want to talk um, about uh, the sewer break we had and the sewer project, but I also, before I get to that, I did want to recognize um, the poll workers uh, and volunteers who contributed town meeting. Um, we, as mentioned on here a couple times, we had a record number of uh, registered voters at, at the town meeting at 1,105. Uh, so I did want to just recognize the folks who were, you know, dealing with them one-to-one, one-on-one, -on -one, and there was a lot of folks, that, there was a lot of residents there, and uh, they did an amazing job. And I just wanted to recognize them personally. Uh, Carol Nelson, Polly Anderson, Kim Carmody, Sherry April, Sue Edwards, Jen McCarthy, and Etta Maycheck. Uh, all, all of them work directly with our clerk, uh, Diane Dumpy, who also did an amazing job. And, um, you know, we were, I was speaking with Diane uh, last week and we were just talking about how smooth things went. And um, I asked her to give me a list of those, of those names so that we could, so I could publicly thank them for all the great work that they've done and, and that they did on that day. Uh, I do, so we did, ex we experienced the sewer break last week, um, on the Linway, it's from the sewer main, uh, I, know, I know it sparked a lot of questions about where are we with our, uh, with our major sewer project, um, what's amazing is we have had a sewer break in the first five days of June, every year for the last three years. <laughs> uh, it's almost to the day, the same exact day. Uh, this one wasn't, um, wasn't too bad. I don't, have a, I don't have a price yet for how much, how much it ultimately cost us, uh, but it was a fairly quick fix. Uh, it, wasn't, it wasn't a major break, but um, it was all contained within an existing uh, manhole, uh, so we didn't have to, you know, excavate a, a large number of the, you know, a wide area of, of the street in order to get to the break. We were able to um, get into that structure and make the repair pretty quickly. Um, we we uh, have spoken with DEP since then, and Zach and I have met with um, Tom Simbro from Wright Pierce about our, where are we in our current uh, process of the, of the sewer main project. I have a schedule to share. Uh, we, you know, so we, we were reviewing the plans this week. Uh, those plans are going to DEP and DCR next week for their review. 
Uh, they do a technical, DEP always does a technical review uh, of the project before um, any sort of permitting. It actually requires DCR permitting because we're going to be in their roadway. So they'll be taking a look at it as well. And we'll be getting, uh, hopefully, we'll give them about a month to get comments back from them on our project. But we're at um, 99 percent design, just waiting on their comments. We might have to make some changes. Uh, DCR's traffic plan. Uh, we work directly with a consultant that works directly with DCR on all their traffic plans. So we're pretty confident where we are with that. Um, but DCR does, the state would prefer us to wait until the fall uh, to avoid the summer traffic issues for construction. Um, so our hope is to advertise the bid on this project in August, right at August 1st. Uh, we should receive bids and award by the end of August. We'll use September to um, execute a contract. And, you know, by the end of September, we're, we should be installing a bypass, a temporary bypass pipe. Uh, once that's in, uh, hopefully by the beginning of October will be, that's when the slip line uh, project will begin, which will take a few months and hopefully will be done by mid December. And then we'll come back in the spring and do a permanent pavement restoration after the, after the plow season. Um, I have, let's see. We just had a picture up of what we're what we're going to be seeing. So this is a picture. Of, this is a picture of what of what our pipe was going to look like once the slip line comes in. Uh, this is this. If you can see my mouse here on the on the far left and far right is the host pipe, which is our you know what our existing pipe would look like. And what they take is an 18-inch um, plastic pipe. They shrink it down in size and stretch it, and they pull it and push it through the existing hose pipe, and then it, it expands on its own and essentially becomes the new pipe. Um, there's a few different you know, connections and, uh, of this nature, different manholes throughout um, different bends of the pipe throughout the throughout the system from the rotary to Linway. And um, this is this is basically a picture of what we'll be looking at. You know, again, this pipe, this project, you know, this has this plastic has a 50 year lifespan on it. And I have a I have a um, I have a copy of You know, I have a copy of our plan, a copy of the plan, you know, in my office here that if any of the board of selectmen want to come and take a look at, I have copies here in the town hall. Um, this is, it should be a fairly simple, you know, uh, plug and play job for, for a contractor because of all the work that Wright Pierce has done so far on it. So, so bottom line is, we, our hope is to advertise uh, in August and be breaking ground in September. Um, Tony, my only question is, um, so this uh, slip lining will be what part of the pipe? It, from the rotary to the treatment plant. We have, we've also, we ran into a, a little bit of an issue as we talked about at the last meeting with the borrowing and that factors into our timeline uh, in the sense that you have to have your, you have to have the borrowing, the money in place before you can award a contract. Uh, but I'm, I'm actually, it's already been filed with at this as a home rule petition at the state house. I'm speaking with the governor's office tomorrow uh, it's, it sounds like from speaking with Senator Crichton's office that that should move through the legislative process very quickly and not interfere with the schedule I just presented. So, so 
fingers crossed until uh, until September. Um, yeah. Just a reminder for everybody: um, the funding for this project was approved at the reduced scale September fifteenth, twenty twenty town meeting. So um, that spending is authorized by the voters. Uh, so that's what I have right now. That's what I have right now. Uh, we are tomorrow, uh, myself, police, fire, DPW, emergency management are meeting with the key players from the wall that heals. Uh, we are in, you know, we're going to be uh, meeting with them pretty regularly from now until July 14th to make sure that we're fully prepared for that event. Uh, and as we mentioned earlier in tonight's meeting, we have a number of other things going on here at the town hall with as far as um, um, employment, uh, employment uh, opportunities, trying to get think people hired. Um, and, uh, you know, with our impending ret retirements at the end of the month. Um, and we're just, you know, we're dealing with, with, uh, summer schedule of maintenance with DBW and trying to get a number of the projects that were approved at last town meeting um, up and up and ready to go. Uh, we also have uh, Comcast contract is up for renewal in July. Uh, Dan and I will be actually Dan do you want to take that for a second? I do. Um, it is up in uh, July, on July 9th, actually a month from today. And this is Comcast, not Verizon. Verizon is still good until the end of the year, so we should expect to hear from them around uh, August with a letter. But we got a letter from Comcast a while back uh, wanting to renew, obviously, their license because it's essentially a franchisee. And we need to have a hearing in that regard. And that's one of the things I think Tony was thinking about when he said we're going to need to meet again early July. Um, so it's a hearing that's to make sure that the residents have a chance to pipe in on issues they might have with Comcast. Um, and there are some things we need to sort of check boxes for. And, uh, and then if, if that hearing goes well, and I'm sure it will, we'll, um, we'll go ahead and you guys would vote to, ex to execute the contract, we'd execute it, and then make a public statement and send a letter to the state. Um, and then that'll be it for that. But before that can happen, we have to do a little bit of negotiation with Comcast. To that end, I've reached out to the representative, hope to hear from them very soon. But I really don't think there's gonna be much to talk about because a lot of this stuff is statutory driven. Uh, I think two intangibles are going to be the paid contribution that they currently make at 45,000 per contract term and um, any sort of poll issues that might come up. But I, did, I think it'll be a pretty streamlined <coughs> process, but we have, to get in, we have to get in this hearing though. That is a must, that's a, that's a, that's a regulatory requirement from the state. So that, and that should occur somewhere in early June, early July, late June, keeping in mind that the contract expires on the 9th. Dan, um, if I recall correctly, isn't there two processes that the town could take? One's really sort of a short term and checking all the boxes, but one's a more long term type of process um, that you could take with this? Well, this, this federal law requires a hearing only if we're going to deny the renewal okay. application. But the, but the state, the state require the state, I can give you the actual site, 207 CMR 3053 requires a hearing. Um, okay. And again, I don't think it'd be very much that what we do have to get is notice out. So we have to really set a date very soon. So we get the two week notice into the Lynn item so we can okay. check that box. Okay. okay. Hey, uh, just a, another quick question related to, to technical uh, with, with cell phone reception. I've had a couple of people ask, and it's a question I have myself. Why do we have such a difficulty on the higher side of town with cell phone reception? It cuts out almost immediately, let's say, from Moore Street up to the country club. That's why we need to pass the Infrastructure Act. <laughs> Straight <laughs> out <of> it. <laughs> well, I mean, it, it really is. It's it's been that way for quite a while. 
I know that, I, Tony, I know that when they first came in, um, they go through, Gene, they go through what is called, referred to as a propagation study. And basically, they, they set up at a high point in town and see where the weak spots are, where the um, strengths are, and where the towers should be. And the propagation studies in hard. I mean, it was, I mean, the only place that they could put the tower is where it's at um, currently. And, you know, there are some places that are better than others, but there's not much more you can do at this point. And it gets, uh, I think, uh, vegetation and overgrowth has something to do with it, too. Um, yeah, during, during the summer. Something to do with the police radio situation, too. Yeah. Well, it's not good. No, it's not good for the United States. I mean, I, I can't believe it. I mean, I, you get in parts of this country that you can't get coverage. And it's, not, it's unacceptable. I mean, I've been to China. I've been to Africa. I've been to other places that have better coverage than I get up in Maine. Um, and, <laughs> you know, it's, it's crazy. It is. And we, the, the country needs to improve in that, for sure. But I get off the soapbox. <laughs> Uh, good, re good reason to be on it. Yeah. Uh, anything else, Tony? No, that's all. That's, that's all right. Yeah, just before we leave this, um, you know, thanks for mentioning all the people that helped out with the election, and um, they did a great job. And it, it got me thinking about you know all these different committees that people volunteer for: planning board and library trustees and. CONCOM and Zoning Board of Appeals, it's, it's incredible the, the devotion um, you know, that our citizens put in to helping this town run. It's, it's pretty amazing. So thanks to all of them too. And I'll just remind- just All right, I think the last- I just want to remind folks again that um, short of legislative action, our next our next board of selectmen meeting will likely be under the old rules and will be in person here at the town hall. That's right. All right, we're getting the band back together. <laughs> um, all right, um, next up is Citizens Forum. Josh, if I could jump in before we open it up. Um, I deferred my opening comments. Uh, I was hoping a few people would come on, and I'm not quite sure I see them unless they're on a the telephone number. Um, but I got a call from a couple um, residents, and they agreed that I share their names, Linda uh, Jenkins and Jimmy Ward. Um, they were both interested in uh, stepping up and uh, seeing if there was a possibility to form a sort of a volunteer group in the hand of citizens that could help out with small projects around town um, and also maybe help out some of the seniors, um, some household chores and those types of things. Um, the, the reason for their concern was they really wanted to start focusing on, you know, what we have in common rather than our differences um, and to sort of try to bring the community together um, a little bit more, um, and I thought it was a great idea. I talked to the town administrator about this briefly today, and um, I'd like to try to foster that sort of involvement. Um, they, they're willing to step up and, you know, form a volunteer committee that will participate in these activities. Um, Tony had some really good ideas about this. I think it has some... Um, it's a merit, and uh, it's certainly something we should look into. Uh, there are a lot of small little projects around town, whether it's you know painting railings or I mean uh, painting um, painting the wharf, for example, where the community could get together and, and do that. Um, uh, so I, I, th I thought it was a great opportunity to, to take a look at this. And Tony, you had some even more ideas about this, so maybe you could share them. Uh, we, 
we've been, you know, when I first came in a couple of years back, um, it was it was something we talked about really doing last year, year number two, was ramping up, you know, public events, community events, things that bring the community together. And then we went through the opposite uh, uh, scenario with the pandemic and had to keep everybody apart. Uh, so now that we're on the other side of that, and, and hopefully we continue to um, to see that and not have a um, you know a reoccurrence of that pandemic, uh, we are starting to take a look at you know public events and what we can do this summer that can bring the community together. Uh, and it was coincidental that uh, you called me um, with that idea because I had just left. You know, I'm talking with um, Kristen Taylor and our new summer intern, Olivia Cook, um, about just that very thing. And the first thing we put, the, one of the number one things that we had Olivia start working on was a, um, what it would take for us to maybe do a farmer's market uh, in town, you know, one, one, every other weekend or something like that. Uh, we were looking at, um, you know, uh, other types of events that we could do, like outdoor um, outdoor movies for kids, um, different little, you know, types of community events that help bring the community together. So um, I'd love to I'd love to meet with uh, Linda and um, and Jimmy Jim Moore. and. And, and Olivia together and Kristen and and maybe Mark, if you could be there and, and we could do some brainstorming and then maybe see if maybe the next step is to uh, expand it, you know, and offer it up to other residents in town to see if they want to get involved. But I love the idea. And, um, you know, I love, I love the idea of creating uh, not only, not only, you know, volunteer opportunities to give back to the community and especially like our seniors and those and the residents, which we can involve the Council on Aging, but, you know, having some, maybe, maybe creating some new events that are here to stay year after year. Um, I like it. I like the idea a lot. So. And I'll, I'll talk to Linda and Jim tomorrow and perhaps we can schedule some meetings and report back to the board. Um, about that. Wonderful idea. I love it. And this year, you know, with, you know, we've already, we're already off to such a great start uh, with the event, uh, the May event that happened up at East Point. And then we have the Wall of the Heels coming in July. Um, you know, so we already have like these two new events that brought a bunch of people together. So, um, we're in a good spot. I like it. I like the direction we're heading in. That's all I have, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Yeah, that's great. Very exciting. Okay, Citizens Forum. Uh, Eugene, did you have anything else? No, I'm good. All right. Time for Citizens Forum. If we have anything in the chat, Tony. Nothing in the chat. So if anybody... Um, on Zoom wants to unmute themselves. Please announce your name and address. <clears throat> Going once. Hi, uh, Brennan Baronic Olmstead, Two Summer Street. I had a question of how, who do I contact in the town about getting a sailboat keel, which um, is still on my property from a storm two years ago? Uh, I think that the, the time the DPW was going to come down with their front end loader and remove it, it's about 300 pounds. Um, I thought, I'm sorry, Brent, I thought um, we did remove it. Um, but I'll talk to, I'll talk to Zach. Uh, was there an issue with access? Um, well, I think it was the tide schedule because, you know, it has to be low enough and it has to be during the daylight hours and on a weekday. 
didn't that wasn't that removed by a private didn't the owner of the boat hire a removal company to do that job no that was the large boat this was the sailboat that got blown in and then smashed on my rocks I'm a, I'm a tutor horse. I'm a tutor this would have been the tudor beach side okay yeah. All right, I'll talk to the DPW. Okay, thank you. Hi, uh, this is Tom Alessi at uh, 155 uh, Nahant Road. Can you hear me? Yep, we can hear you. Okay, great. So um, last year you guys changed your fees on the garbage removal process. It used to be households. Now you, I own four units there, and um, <clears throat> now you, you're charging me per unit. So I called the DPW and asked them several times to have the uh, garbage picked up at, at Two Kennedy Court. They they used to do it for many many years, and then all of a sudden you guys changed the contract and they they stopped it and. Um, so I called the DPW at least five times. I called um, your office um, a couple times. And I spoke to someone today, a woman. She told me to get on the Zoom call and uh, speak to you guys directly. So <clears throat> they're saying that they can't get the big trucks down the road, um, but they have smaller trucks. And I, you, you, you have waste management that is coming up for a contract and and I have tenants that are taking their garbage and walking all the way down Kennedy Court to the to Nahant Road with their garbage and it's it it should not be that way I mean we, we should be able to compromise and say say go halfway down Kennedy Court where the truck can pull up and pick up the the barrels instead of my tenants going all the way down to Nahant Road and I, I like I like to have some sort of solution to this. Yeah, I wish Ed was still. Hi, Tom. This is Tony. Uh, Hi. Thank you for jumping on the call. Sorry to be uh, sorry to miss you. Um, I wish Ed was still on the call. We do have smaller trucks that service some of the tighter roads in town in Bass Point area and Little Vermont area. Uh, so I can definitely ask Ed if uh, we could include Kennedy Court to that list. Okay, that'd be great. I mean, it, 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 you know, it, it'd be awesome because I don't mind paying a little bit more, but as long as I get the service for it, I don't really care. No, it's it's curbside, right? So it should come. It should come. Uh, you shouldn't have to walk it all the way down the end of the street. Um, let me ask. Let me talk to Ed. I don't see why we couldn't come up with a solution. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Yep. Uh, any anybody else for citizen form? I have to keep moving around to get good Wi-Fi here. <laughs> um, um, okay, with that, then uh, we have no executive session this evening. So, um, is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Seconded. Any discussion? Hearing none, roll call vote. Jane Kenty, aye. Mark Cullen, and I. Josh Andrew, my. Thank you, everybody. All right. um, see you next time. Good night. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Good night.